After sitting through the other videos talking about normal loading, you may be sitting there asking yourself, now wait a minute, isn't the force going to vary a little bit across the cross section? Because we're looking at things going on, so aren't we really just doing the average stress in the beam? Because we're just taking that axial force and go, dividing it by the area. So one thing to remember is axial force and normal, pretty much talking about the same thing. So the normal force would be the axial force loaded along there. So what if I wanted to know, hey, let's look at this B section here. What if I wanted to know the stress at that specific point? Well, we would still go back to our general definition of stress and go to the limit as delta A approaches zero is going to be equal to the sum, the infinitesimal force in the z direction divided by the area, which we'll say is the, stre the normal stress in the z direction. <clears throat> now it is going to vary across the sections. So if we go and we look at each little part of the bar, then you can see, and it's kind of exaggerated, but we can see that we have stresses that are changing along that bar. So what do we end up doing? So we can use the magic of calculus to, to change over that, that limit into a magnitude of the resultant force. And so that is if we take the integral of df across the entire area, stress da, and we can go and do this. Now, because of the equilibrium, the sum of all, the integration of all those differential forces has to equal p, has to equal r normally. Because if it doesn't, then there's a force imbalance and the bar would move. Now, so the only information we can get from the stress distribution is statically indeterminate. So we're going to see how we can solve some of those later. But in practice, we're looking at this, the real scientific definition is the stress over that entire area. Now, once again, this doesn't answer what's going on, aside from giving us an equation now that we can say that the stress times the integration of uh, the stress integrated over the area is going to be equal to the external force, which is, that will come up a lot where we're using this equation to say stress over area is equal to the load, and we'll be able to, oops, sorry, <laughs> stress times the area is going to be equal to the load. We'll use that in, in other problems later on. But once again, this does not talk about how this is going to change over the area because we are dealing with the average stress. But I'm going to tell you, we can look at that for normal stresses just fine. And the reason is, is if we ran a number, a huge numeric simulation, we're going to find that the stress across this entire cross-section is only going to vary about 4%. So it's not really a big deal what's going on, so we can use the average. Now that's for normal stress. When we start talking about shear stress, we cannot do that because there's a radical change in the force density across the number. So we just have to remember that because of the magic of calculus, we know that stress times the area is going to be equal to the force, and then we it's the average across that we're fine with because it's such a small amount of difference. Now that's for axial loading. What happens if we have an eccentric loading situation? So I have something like this. So here I have my two force member that kind of jogs around. So if I do a cut right here, I have an internal moment going on. Because if I don't, these P forces are gonna cause it to spin. It's in static equilibrium, it can't spin, so I've got to apply an internal moment the other way to stop that. And so now what we have is we have a case where we have normal or axial stress. And that's given to us by that P. And then we have a moment, which is going to be a bending stress. And we'll see later, we're going to add these together to find out the state of stress on an eccentrically, eccentrically loaded member. We'll do that in a couple chapters. Because right now we're just going to worry about normal stress. But this is what happens when we're applying a force that's not applied through the central. And so we are going to talk about that in much more detail later. 
Okay, with that, if there are any questions, let me know, and I'll see you in the next video.